Hi, this is your host Swapnil Bhartia and welcome to T3M or topic of this month. And as you know, the topic of this month is security and compliance. And today we have with us from Loft Labs, Oleg Matsky, Senior Software Engineer. Oleg, it's great to have you on the show. Well, uh, thank you for having me. Before we deep dive into uh, this topic and get into the weeds, I want to start with some basics, which is more or less like if you look at uh, security, it has evolved a lot from the traditional IT or legacy IT world. Uh, when we look at the cloud-centric, multi-cloud world, so can you talk about how you have seen the evolution of security in the multi-cloud, cloud-native world? I think the best practices for the security in the cloud world have been documented for a long time, but with recent adoption of the infrastructure as code tools and GitOps, uh, we are seeing better uh, overview uh, and better o audit ability uh, for the organizations. Uh, so they have, yeah, very uh, precise view of how their infrastructure is configured at all times. And that definitely helps with the security. And on the cloud native side, we've seen a lot of focus on uh, supply chain security recently. Can you also talk about when we do talk about security in the context of cloud, as we saw in the traditional IT world, it was an afterthought because the way the software was distributed is, is different than it is now. Now the developers, DevOps, DevSecOps, sorry, whatever the label is, they are kind of responsible for the whole lifespan of the software versus you create a software, you sell it to a user, user is responsible for doing it. So they're different teams, they're different silos. Um, we, we say that, you know, in the cloud native world, security is not an afterthought, it has become a priority, but we still see a lot of cases of breaches are happening. You deal with a lot of customers. Do you see that security has become a priority, that security is no longer an afterthought, or you still see there are some gaps? Yeah, I think security is priority for those who make it a priority. Uh, and this shift to the left definitely helps with uh, finding the gaps much, much sooner in the cycle and also reacting much quicker to any new vulner vulnerabilities. Uh, but yeah, but organizations still need to make it a priority to leverage these advantages. Security is kind of not a product, it's kind of process, right? It's the whole movement. And also it's like cat and mouse game. The bad actors are always, you know, looking for breaches. And then in today's world, security can be a software bug. It could be misconfiguration. It could be a, like the bookings.com API vulnerability in OAuth. So there are so many things that can go wrong when it comes to security. If you just look at last six months, do you see any breaches where you see like, hey, you know what? Uh, we still have to do a lot more work or when you look back and you see, you know, things are getting much better. Yes, I think things are getting better on the infrastructure side, securing the infrastructure access. Uh, but we've seen a lot of uh, breaches due to phishing attacks directly on the users and they can get very sophisticated. Uh, even uh, with the use of two-factor authentication, uh, some bad actors can still find the gaps. And I think we still have work to do in the educating the users about all the right practices and how to notice uh, these phishing attacks. If you have seen any new kind of threats that have emerged or uh, because of the cloud, you know, native cloud center work, there are a lot of things that, of course, API is vulnerability, and you also talked about, you know, phishing attacks, social engineering is also going on, which happened with the Uber. Uh, so, so uh, where you have seen, hey, these are the new threats th th which are emerging that we have to be concerned with or organizations should be aware of. Yeah, I think in the cloud native world, there is a lot of different tools emerging. Uh, so, the organizations need to treat uh, like newcomers uh, carefully uh, with the new tools, uh, but the attacks are usually just getting more sophisticated, uh, but you could see still uh, parallels to the history. Earlier, we were talking about, you know, some of these practices you, you mentioned, uh, shift left. Uh, 
how much adoption are you seeing of practices like, of course, DevSecOps, Zero Trust, uh, the whole shift left movement? We talk a lot about it, but how much you're seeing in reality, which has been practiced, adopted? I don't see our customers like discussing it in exact terms like um, DevSecOps. Like they are not really putting these labels uh, on their processes, uh, but just from the general uh, like how the discussion go we can see that it's a priority and um, as far as for example zero trust goes i think that's still a concern of really big companies uh, especially in the very uh, regulated industries uh, not so much maybe for the smaller companies now let's just talk about uh cultural side of it, there are a lot of solutions, there are a lot of technologies, there are a lot of open source projects, but it's all of these are useless if you know uh, these are not these practices are implemented. So talk a bit about what kind of cultural changes are needed or you're seeing your customers are implement, implementing so that they have all these processes, they have this cultural change in place also. Yeah, so in my discussions with the customers, I often talk to the engineers, not so much to the managers. Um, and uh, that's really where I would like to see that active approach about the uh, security, like from the bottom up. Uh, so when I talk to the engineers and they are uh, asking all the right questions about security, that's how, in my opinion, it should be. Uh, so it's not really something that can be very easily dictated from the top. So if the companies do just that, like saying this is what you need to do in terms of security uh, and not explaining why and how to the engineers and not uh, making them part of the conversation. I think that's a problem for the security. But if it's otherwise and the engineers are taking the proactive role, I think that's the best outcome. Security, as you also said, is becoming priority. So talk a bit about how Loft solution even if directly or indirectly, helps customers improve their security. Yeah, so at Loft, we provide building blocks for platform builders. And one of these uh, important building blocks is access to Kubernetes clusters for the users of these Kubernetes platforms. Uh, so Loft provides much easier uh, role management and access to many uh, clusters in one central space, which you can also manage through GitOps. Uh, also, we provide uh, the virtual clusters capability, uh, which gives additional levels of, of security for uh, the Kubernetes administrators. Um, yeah, I think these are the main uh, security topics for Loft. Let's wrap this uh, discussion with uh, some kind of, you know, uh some kind of advice that uh, these are uh, the practices companies should embrace to improve their security posture. I think companies uh, need to invest in their people, like educating engineers about security and uh, explaining uh, why it's important. And I think that will bring a lot of benefits down the road uh, by engineers being proactive and uh, really implementing all those best practices correctly. And I think this already will be a big jump for uh, many companies. Oleg, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this topic. And I would love to have you back on the show again soon. Thank you. Thank you.